Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to be uh, doing our third lecture on compactness. We've uh, talked a bit about what compactness means and uh, why it's uh, such an important concept, but we haven't yet shown beyond a, a finite set and the other sets that are compact. Okay, finite sets are compact, but uh, today we're actually going to prove that. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the interval is compact, the closed interval. And then we're going to show, in fact, that if you're talking about points in, in, in R or Rn, that uh, closed and bounded sets are compact, and that's the heine borel theorem. And we'll prove some other theorems about compactness as well. Okay, okay so I just want to remind you what we've done uh, up until now um, in, for in terms of what we know about compactness. So from last time, or even the time before, we showed that compact sets are bounded. Uh, we also, last time, showed that compact sets are closed. This is true in any metric space, okay? The, the proofs we had, if you recall, uh, worked in any metric space. To show compact sets are bounded, does anybody remember the idea? So when you, when you recall key theorems from this course or any math course, you should uh, try to have in your, your mind a picture of, of why it's true. Why, why is it true that compact sets are bounded? Let's see. Um, well, the idea is to show that the compact set's contained in some ball, right? What ball did we place a, a, a compact set in if you know that every cover has a finite subcover? Yes. Good. Take balls of radius one, and then okay. Now I'm a little concerned about taking maximum radius between any centers of any two balls, unless you have how many balls? Finitely many. How do we know there are finitely many balls? Compactness gives us a finite subcover of the cover of all balls with radius 1. Yes? Ah, then we can take a maximum because there are only finitely many things to check. In fact, just take one center and look at the maximum distance to any other center and then add 2 to account for the, the, the balls around, right? That's the picture you have in your head. Compact sets are bounded. And we used finiteness in a very essential way here, right? Which shouldn't surprise us because. That's the whole point of compact sets. Compact sets are the next best thing to being finite. finite. Okay, good. Compact sets are closed. What was the picture proof there? Take a, a compact set, take a point not in the set, and show that that point is what? Not a limit point. limit point, which is the same as showing that it has a ball around it that separates it from this compact set, yes? Good. How did we find this ball? <coughs> Take a point in the set. And this point. OK. So there are partner sets for every point in the set and this point. Good. You have a bunch of partner sets. That cover this. Okay, good. So so there, th the set of all such partner sets. The sets on the left here all cover this set. That's a cover. Because this is compact, there exists a finite subcover. And then look at those partners, and there are only finally many of them, take their intersection. Excellent. That's the, that's the, that's the picture proof you should have in your head. OK, awesome. Uh, something else we showed uh, is that closed subsets of compact sets are compact. And we also showed at the very end a result that isn't a result about compactness, it's just a, 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 a theorem that we'll need, in fact, today. 
that says that if you have nested closed intervals in the real line, then their intersection is actually non-empty. Okay, uh, and uh, you know it's not true for all closed sets, is it? It's just this is a statement about closed intervals. Why is it not true for all closed sets that the intersection is non-empty? Nested closed sets. What if I had closed rays going from zero to the right, one to the right, two to the right, three to the right? Are those nested? Yeah, they're nested. Is their intersection have anything in it? No. Right, if you take rays that go from zero all the way to infinity, one, infinity, two, infinity, three, infinity, is there any point that's in all those sets? No. <laughs> right? Yes, infinity not being a point, but just the, uh, the ray that goes off infinitely far. Yes, so uh, the fact that it's, uh, this, this statement is not true for arbitrary closed sets, but it is true for closed intervals. Okay, at the very end of last time I showed you kind of an, uh, uh, as an aside, a, 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 a cute proof that R is uncountable using this fact. Okay, so today uh, what I would like to do is then begin by showing you, we're gonna use this theorem to help us show the first important theorem for today, which is uh, the fact that uh, any closed interval A, B is compact. Hooray, this will give us, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, our first large class of sets that are known to be compact in the real line. This is a subset of the real line. That goes without saying, but I will say it anyway. Okay, uh, in general, this is actually true also for K cells in RK. So a K cell, uh, recall, is basically products of closed intervals. They're, they're the rectangular boxes in RK. Okay, okay. so uh, let's prove this. How are we going to prove that AB is compact? The closed interval A, B. How are we going to do this? Let's draw ourselves a little picture. Here's an interval A, B. Well, to show that it's compact, I'd want to show that any open cover has a finite subcover. Now, that's a lot of open covers to check, right? And certainly, I could maybe try to start that way. But here's a, another way, another strategy for proving that this is compact. I could try to prove this by contradiction. How would I start off a proof by contradiction? Good. So suppose not. Suppose AB were not compact. That would mean instead of every open cover as a finite subcover, that would mean there is an open cover that has no finite subcover. Okay, then there exists an open cover, and let's give it a name. Uh, how about G sub alpha? That has no finite subcover. Oh. Now the nice thing about starting this way is that I now have a specific cover to hang my hat on. Right? I, can, I can work with this one specific cover and try to show things about it, hopefully get a contradiction. Okay. So I, who knows, I don't know what this set looks like, but let me uh, just draw an example cover. Maybe uh, such a cover you know, consists of sets that look like you know, there's a bunch of sets here, possibly lots of them. But just so pretend for a second that this is my cover. Obviously an infinite cover that has no finite subcover that will c cover a, a, B. You with me? I'm going to try to get a contradiction. Okay. Uh, 